Today, I'm going to be making Biscoff Millionaire's Shortbread. Uh, you need three sets of ingredients. You're going to make a shortbread base, you're going to make caramel, and you're going to make topping. I'll have laid everything out at the beginning, and so I'll show you what you're going to need for each part. For the shortbread base, you need a half cup plus two tablespoons of butter softened. You need four tablespoons of Biscoff spread, and I left it laid out just so you can see. I just bought this 14 ounce uh, jar of Biscoff spread. Uh, you need a fourth cup plus two tablespoons of light brown sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla, and one plus one fourth cup plus two tablespoons of plain flour. That's for the shortbread base. Then for the caramel, you need three-fourths cup butter, which I have laying out here, a fourth cup plus two tablespoons of sugar, a fourth cup of golden syrup, and I left this out to show you, I bought the Lyle's golden syrup, so it's in here, a 14 ounce condensed milk, sweet condensed milk, and then one teaspoon of vanilla. And then lastly, for the topping, you're going to need 7.94 ounces of white chocolate. This is actually just a Nestle Toll House white chocolate chips. Uh, two tablespoons of the Biscoff spread, and you're going to need eight Biscoff biscuits. So the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and you want to... Uh, get an 8 inch and 8 by 8 pan and you want to put parchment, uh, line it with parchment paper. So the first thing we want to do to make our base is you want to, um, ideally in an electric mixer, you want to mix your butter, your brown sugar, and your Biscoff spread until it is creamy. Once it is creamy, uh, I'm going to be adding in the vanilla. So I'm scraping my bowl down now, and then I'm going to add in all that flour. I'm going to be adding in uh, a spoonful at a time just so that it doesn't puff up and uh, just make sure that it's all mixed in. This is what your mixture looks like. You're gonna take this and put it in your eight by eight pan. This is what it looks like with the parchment paper. And I will probably end up using my uh, fingertips to press this into the, the bottom of the pan. Now we are going to put this in the uh, oven at 350. It says for 20 to 25 minutes. I'll probably set it for 22 minutes. So now to make the caramel, you're going to use uh, all of your caramel ingredients except for the vanilla. Don't don't fool with the vanilla yet. Uh, so we want to put them in a pan. We're gonna cook this on the stove. So you need your butter, sugar, golden syrup, and sweetened condensed milk. And we're gonna put these on the uh, the stove. And we're going to heat it on low heat and we're gonna stir it until everything is melted together and the sugar has dissolved. And then we're going to bring it to a boil and let it boil for six minutes. Once it's boiled for six minutes, then we'll take it off the heat and add in the vanilla. But the first thing is our, our goal is just to melt this all together. boiling and so now we're going to keep continue to stir for six minutes so now we're taking that we've taken this off the heat it's been six minutes and we're going to stir in our vanilla and uh, we are also uh, I'll show you our uh, shortbread has come out of the oven and we're allowing it to cool off uh, so that uh, it we can put this caramel on top of the cooled shortbread 
So now I'm gonna take my caramel mixture and I'm going to pour it over the shortbread mixture. this out it's a very light pretty color if you want it to cool off quickly you can put it in or more quickly it's not gonna be quick but you could put this whole thing in the refrigerator or if you don't care how long it takes you can let it sit out on the counter but before you can put your um, topping on at the end it has to come back to room temperature I do want mine to cool off quickly, of course, because I'm that's me. So I am going to put this whole pan in the refrigerator. So this is what it looks like when your caramel is set. So now we want to move on to the topping. So we want to take our uh, uh, milk, uh, white chocolate, and we want to put it in the microwave. And you want to, it says for 30 second intervals. Uh, put it in for 30 seconds, stir it, and then for 10 seconds at a time, stir it again, 10 more seconds, stir it again, and then we'll come back when it's all melted. This is hot. You're going to pour this over the top of your caramel and then spread it out. going to take our Biscoff spread and we're going to put it in the microwave and heat it up until it is able to be poured. It says uh, for 20 to 30 seconds until it's pourable. So Kevin heated this for 20 seconds. take something and kind of swirl this around just to break up some of just to break up probably. yes but it doesn't really matter honestly because you're going to be covering a lot of this up with cookie anyway so swirl it a little bit yeah, it actually looks nice. get it out to the edge a little bit and now go ahead and open your cookies so it said you take about eight cookies and you're just gonna roughly um, break them like this into hunks on the top. I'm gonna let it sit on the counter because I don't wanna put it like in the refrigerator or the freezer or anything because I don't want these biscuits to get soft and uh, I would not like that. So um, I'm gonna let it just sit on the counter until uh, that uh, white chocolate gets firm. So this has set, the spread is set, and the reason, the way you can tell, the way you can tell that it's set is because it was really glossy. The Biscoff was glossy and now it's not. So. It was shiny. <laughs> yes, it was shiny. So I've had this at room temperature the whole time. And let's see, that's how it looks from the side. So now I'm gonna cut it into bars. Okay, so here we go. They, they look good. Just, just, I mean, it's a little sticky. So, you can actually pick this up. It's mm -hmm. very, very thick. The super thick part. I'm going <laughs> to take a bite out of just the edge. Oh, wow. The that... caramel's firm, but mm -hmm. very soft. Mm hmm. I'm sure the longer you let them set, the better. Here we go. This biscuit's always good. That is very um, rich. Very sweet. I love the um, the crust on the bottom. Mm -hmm. The shortbread. Mm -hmm. The shortbread's really nice. It's not um, crunchy or crunchy. Riddle it's very very like soft. It almost um, it, is. it reminds you of the texture of a sugar cookie. Um, 
it has the addition of the um, Biscoff in it, but to me it reminds me of a sugar cookie um, and not so much a shortbread cookie. I love the Biscoff flavor. The actual mm -hmm. cookie on top, that cookie on top is where you're getting a lot of your Biscoff flavor. And the caramel's really good too. The mm -hmm. I've been trying to try pieces of it like by itself. It's hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, the caramel is very good and sweet. And very soft. But it's I, not sticky. No, it's... I'll tell you where a lot of sweetness comes from is that white chocolate. Mm. I mean, the caramel is very sweet. But that white chocolate really added sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. And see the caramel. <laughs> and I got the exact amount of pieces I was supposed to. I cut it into 16 pieces. That's how many it serves. It says it's 430 calories a piece. That's probably right. I, I can, I can believe that. Um, the recipe came from the bakingexplorer.com and I will put the link below in the description. I think this is delicious. I think anybody that likes Biscoff, if you like white chocolate, you do not have to use white chocolate. You can use um, milk, uh, you can use milk chocolate or dark chocolate, but white chocolate goes really well with Biscoff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it does. I think this is delicious. Mm -hmm. The, Very good. the only thing that uh, you might not like is the waiting time because you have to wait for each layer to cool down completely and, and in all honesty we didn't let the the base layer cool down completely no it before was still we put the caramel on yeah. top it was still a little warm but it was fine mm -hmm. oh that texture of no shortbread of just the, the caramel and the top it's really good oh my gosh it's all good mm -hmm. yeah like like you said really it's not the only bad thing about it is the waiting between steps. Mm -hmm. Really, the making of it really wasn't that hard. Honestly. No, if you're like me, I'm very impatient and I'm like, I want to eat it right now. Mm -hmm. That's the only bad part. This is rich and delicious though. I, I did totally make them. I did notice too, when you're making your caramel, stir it constantly. It doesn't seem like you need to, but you do because it'll scorch. Yes. Um, while you're stirring it, you'll get little brown like uh, flecks come through here and there where it's like a little scorched sugar or whatever. Just keep stirring it, it'll, it'll all break down and it's fine. Because mm -hmm. I didn't see any of that once we got to the point where we were pouring it. It was all gone. But this isn't one of those recipes where you stop stirring. No. You need no. to... If you're doing the sugar, pure sugar kind, you're boiling it like that kind of caramel, you stop stirring and let it set. This one, if you stop stirring, it's just going to burn on the bottom. Yes. And then when you are finished pouring your caramel out of the pan, go ahead and wash it immediately. <laughs> that way it won't stick in the mm -hmm. pan. <laughs> yeah. It's still soft. But I think I give this recipe five out of five. Right, thumb, two thumbs up. Over the top sweet. <laughs> it's very good. So I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.